My name's Charles Miller, and I'm a resident of Los Angeles. And um, to your last statement, uh, I agree with you uh, until there's a tunnel, and then it goes to the 210. So that's a whole other situation. But a uh, question I have is there's a project uh, drilling a tunnel in Seattle that has gone well over budget and is now delayed uh, a significant amount of time. Uh, if that really has been the model that Metro has pointed to, uh, is that really proving to be a viable option today? I think I would just say this, that there is a great engineering mind in this nation, in this place where I don't think, uh, we, we're the best in the country when it comes to these kind of things. So I, I have faith, I have faith that whatever we end up designing, Whatever we end up designing will be safe, uh, reliable. I don't think Metro or Caltrans or anybody will ever go for anything less than that. So I, whether the issues in Seattle or should not be an obstacle. Good evening. The giant boring machine dubbed Bertha didn't skip a beat after triggering a big sinkhole, and she might cause another one soon. As King 5's Gary Chittam reports, the big Seattle tunnel project is in a current stretch of shaky ground. Engineers and utility workers gathered today at the site of Bertha's first sinkhole. That patch of light ground is where workers filled the hole that opened up as the giant boring machine, or TBM, crept below early Thursday. The before photos show a classic sinkhole, which engineers say was not unexpected while tunneling through an area that was formed by dirt cleared from other parts of Seattle. The area that the machine is in is still in uh, fill material. And it will be for a while. The sinkhole occurred about 460 feet into Bertha's two mile long journey. She was digging at a slight downward angle, about 35 feet below the surface in that soft fill material, when a seven foot sinkhole opened up. Engineers say Bertha will be below the fill soil level in a few weeks. So there's, there's a potential that we could see additional occurrences of these until the top of the TBM gets down out of the fill into the glacial till. Having a sinkhole several yards that way is one thing, but remember, Bertha is coming this way toward this structure, the very structure the tunnel will replace. The viaduct is being replaced because it's vulnerable to ground movement. <laughs> Bertha being underneath us? Absolutely not. DOT engineers say she shouldn't be worried. Before Bertha took her first bite, underground walls were installed to protect the viaduct. And they say Bertha will be deep enough that she shouldn't cause any interruption to the viaduct or any other structure. It turned out to be 21 feet deep, 12 feet wide. But sinkholes, as we've learned from other tunnel projects in Seattle, are part and parcel of the tunneling process. Bertha may have a few more messes to clean up before her job is done. In Seattle, Gary Chittam, King 5 News. The contractor building the new Highway 99 tunnel says they're surprised the state is suddenly blaming them for delays and problems. This comes as the tunnel boring machine continues to be stuck, and the Secretary of Transportation had harsh words about the delay. King 5's Linda Brill is at the Bertha site with the latest. Linda. Dennis, Bertha is not moving right now, but the finger pointing, that is moving very quickly. Men were supposed to go down into Bertha's chamber today to see what the damage is, but they did not go in. They would be working under extreme air pressure. Now pressure is coming from Olympia. As Bertha sits idle underground near Seattle's Pioneer Square, tensions are mounting in Olympia. As the state's Secretary of Transportation updates lawmakers on the Highway 99 tunnel project. We're looking for answers again to specific parts of the machine and whether it needs refinement, not that there's a fatal flaw. The Senate Transportation Committee hears concerns about the project contractor, Seattle Tunnel Partners. What we're looking for is confirmation that all of the tests have been run, all of the work has been done to plan ahead. Bertha's in her sixth week stranded in the soil, and Peterson wants to know STP's strategy to regain lost time. Bertha hit an eight inch diameter metal pipe on December 3rd, but the contractor kept drilling for three more days, running the machine at unusually high temperatures. And there are issues around whether the contractor has done something to Bertha, the machine itself, that might be um, causing the delay. Seattle's mayor shares the state's concerns. 
And time is running out on accepting Bertha. The $80 million drill made by Hitachi is still in the break-in period before formal acceptance by the tunnel team, which will happen once it's dug around 1,200 feet, and she's almost there now at 1,000 feet. Murray wants the contractor to be more transparent about the problems. I don't believe that uh, the State Department of Transportation believes they've been informed what the real issues are with Bertha, or at least what all the issues are. Although it's a state project, the tunnel runs right under downtown Seattle. The mayor wants more state oversight of the project. In a letter today, the contractor wrote to the State Department of Transportation saying that this tension between them could ultimately negatively affect the ability to get this project moving forward and finished. And especially, they say in this letter, because the state left a pipe underground and that's what Bertha got stuck on. I'm Linda Brill reporting live in Seattle, King 5 News. Bertha, the tunnel machine, remains motionless tonight, but the back-and-forth Bertha banter is continuing. The state transportation secretary sent out a new letter today to the tunnel contractors explaining why she's been so publicly critical of the stoppage. King 5's Gary Chittam joins us live with more on what's going on with Bertha today. Gary. Well, Gene, Transportation Secretary Lynn Peterson said, yeah, she's going public because that's her job, to tell the public what's going on with this very expensive project. As you know by now, Bertha hasn't moved for more than a month after she hit something underground. We learned this month the machine actually hit a large metal pipe or a well casing days before it ground to a halt, and that's at least one suspected cause of the problem. Last week, Peterson told members of the state legislature that she had concerns about Bertha months before the machine came to a stop, and that Seattle Tunnel Partners, the contractor, STP, is responsible for any cost overruns or delays caused by Bertha's stoppage. Well, STP fired off a response to that that said in part, We're all surprised that WSDOT appears to be attempting to shift responsibility when WSDOT understands that the cause of the stoppage was encountering a steel well casing which was installed and left in place by WSDOT. To which Peterson today responded with, As to the cause of the current tunnel stoppage, we've all agreed that it's highly unlikely that the well casing is the only issue facing the machine. You stated yourself that you do not know the full extent of the issues. So, they're still arguing over the cause and responsibility of Bertha's meltdown. As we speak, crews are working inside a man-made bubble in front of Bertha to see if there has been any damage to its massive cutting head, and they're looking for any signs of what's in her way. They've been doing this all weekend, and we're still waiting to find out what they've seen. And we've just now received late word from the Washington Department of Transportation that they have been in there for 35 hours now inspecting inside that hyperbaric chamber, that bubble, man-made bubble at the uh, head of Bertha. And at this point, they have found nothing obvious. They still have a lot more work to do. This could continue for a very long time. We still don't know what caused Bertha to come to a stop. Reporting live in Seattle, Gary Chittam, King 5 News. Hmm. Gary, thank State DOT is threatening to find its contractor building the Seattle Tunnel, hundreds of millions of dollars in civil penalties. That's if the company does not start following contract rules to hire enough small, struggling businesses for the mega project. As King 5's investigator Susanna Frame reports, minority contractors say the fines should come now, not later. When the giant contractor hired to build the tunnel came into town, they promised millions of dollars of work to small, local, struggling businesses. It wasn't just a nice idea, but a federally mandated condition of winning the job. But that hasn't happened. The contractor promised work to small businesses, then turned around and did the work themselves. And a federal investigation found the company, Seattle Tunnel Partners, or STP, intentionally discriminated against small and minority-owned businesses. We have people that have lost their homes because they use them as collateral to finance work on projects. Uh, we have families that are no longer families uh, because of the tensions caused by the, the problems that they've had on these contracts. STP has failed small businesses so miserably. Today, Washtut announced they found the company in breach of contract. This is a very serious allegation and findings. 
The state's top transportation official, Secretary Lynn Peterson, says that finding means the contractor could have a tough time ever working in the state again. So a breach of contract finding is a very serious uh, finding, and so just that finding alone will uh, have severe impacts on their future ability to do business. The state will now require STP to report their progress every month. But here's what the state isn't doing to STP, hammering them with fines, despite advice from their own expert to do just that. A special attorney general, Richard Mitchell, hired by the state to investigate, didn't mince words in his conclusions that he strongly recommends that WashDOT recover its damages, assess appropriate financial penalties, and withhold future payments to make sure the contractor has stopped discriminating. We showed Bob Armstead, a minority contracting leader, the AG summary. He says WashDOT should have listened to its expert. And until something is specifically done, to show prime contractors that there's a price to pay for violating contract terms and conditions, they will continue to do it. Washtut says its approach is the best one to solve the problem, putting more little guys to work on this big job. So you're not letting them off the hook? We're not letting them off the hook, and the letter clearly states that we reserve the right for sanctions if progress is not being made. So, so far, how badly has STP blown it? Uh, that company was required to award $91 million worth of work to small businesses, and so far, they've only paid about $21 million, and the job is already about halfway done. So, we're $71 million apart, but Secretary Peterson thinks uh, that they can do it, that they can award that much work. All right, Susanna, thank you. Seattle. Is sinking. Buildings and streets downtown are going down faster than engineers originally thought. Now, engineers are trying to determine if Bertha is to blame and if they need to take emergency action. King 5's Dan Casuto is near Pioneer Square and has more on the mayor holding an emergency press conference there. Engineers are scraping and scrambling to figure out what's pulling downtown down. A new map from WashDOT shows we're sinking most near the access shaft to Bertha, down 1.4 inches. Granted, that's over four years, but in the engineering world, that's fast enough to get the mayor down to King Street, examining every crack and crevice. When you look at this big crack here, mm -hmm. I mean, this looks like it's one or two inches right. deep and there's even a little puddle. Right. What would you feel if you worked in the office building right behind us or you drove on the viaduct just half a block away? So what I would feel is based on the data that we have as of today. We're trying to understand what's going on. If there's an issue, uh, we're going to act to make sure that people are safe. Steve Kramer is a civil engineer at the University of Washington. We're talking about 1.4 inches. Is that really going to be enough to bring down a really old building or even part of the viaduct? Both the viaduct and some of the older structures are, are brittle and they're, they're deficient. Kramer used crunchy versus chewy granola bars to show me how sinking affects old versus new buildings. On one hand, you've got an old building that's brittle. On the other hand, you have a new building that's constructed with better materials. If this old building is sinking and it's not sinking the right way, it snaps, whereas this one will simply deform gradually and still have the strength to maintain its structural integrity. Much even, safer. Even much, very much safer, yes. For now, there's no evidence Bertha had anything to do with the crack on King Street. Google took this picture three years ago. That sure looks like a crack to me. All right, so I'm live on King Street right now, and I want to show you what that crack looks like right now. You can see that this water pooling up, this is what got some people's attention. And that's why they started calling the city, telling them they were worried and concerned about this. That mobilized everything. That's why the mayor had that emergency press conference right here earlier today. He says that the city and the state are working together to inspect the utilities that are underground, some of them dating back to the 1800s. For now, they say this crack might have nothing to do with Bertha, or it might. But for now, there are also no plans, he says, to shut down any of these streets or the viaduct. I'm live in downtown Seattle. Five o'clock, work crews resume digging today on the repair pit for Bertha, the tunnel boring machine. Also, state transportation inspectors are visiting buildings in Seattle's Pioneer Square to look for problems related to the tunnel project. King 5's Gary Chittam is live in Pioneer Square, where no buildings are deemed unsafe, but one 
is showing obvious signs of trouble. Gary. Well, let's talk first of all about why they're resuming the drilling, and uh, they've already done that, the digging, I should say, to get down to get Bertha. They want to make some progress. They think they can safely go about another three feet. That would get them down to 84 feet and about two thirds of the way down to where Bertha is. Now, as you know, they reported yesterday that that shaking and dewatering, pumping of water out of that project to dig down to Bertha is responsible for a settling of the viaduct and as many as 30 buildings in the Pioneer Square area, which brings us to why am I in this bar? Because this isn't just any bar. This is the JMM Cafe. It's billed as the oldest bar in all of Seattle. It is in Pioneer Square, and the owner here says he knows his building is sinking, and he knows it's because of Bertha and the efforts to dig her up. This is historic sub-Seattle. The old sidewalks and streets that Pioneer Square is built upon. You're underneath First Avenue right now, under the sidewalks. It's down here the J&M owner, my flashlight. Mike Petroni, says Bertha is leaving her mark. This crack used to only be half this. Three months ago, this was not like this. This is separate. That's double that. Engineers have wired this building and many others with sensors that should indicate any cracking. They say they haven't done their full-scale investigations, but so far, it looks pretty good. We're not seeing any apparent issues with this settlement which does seem to match the data that we're bringing in, that it's very uniform and very broad-based. They say the buildings and the viaduct can handle that kind of drop, even though it's the biggest since tunneling began. It's believed the pumping of water from the Bertha access pit lowered the water table. That lowered the soil for hundreds of feet away. Everything compacted and anything above it dropped. These buildings can go through this sinking and rebounding and there be no lasting effects whatsoever. I come down the sidewalk and I look, I go, oh, it's still standing. That's what I say. Petroni says state engineers aren't seeing the big picture, the cracking and seeping down below that he's convinced is caused by the Bertha project. He says it's his problem that he didn't cause and he doesn't know how to fix. I have no idea really what they should be doing. I run a restaurant. Now, we've asked to go along with the state engineers when they do inspect these buildings. They have refused that, uh, 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 that offer or have not made that offer, and we're not invited to go with them. And they won't even give us a list of the buildings because they say they want to talk to the owners first. They want to make sure everyone knows about it before hearing about it in the news. But if they're looking for a place to start, the owner of the JNM says, come on in. You can start here. Reporting live in Seattle, Gary Chittum, King 5 News. Okay. Major delays because of Bertha tonight. The contractor building the new Alaskan Way Tunnel says it's going to be months before you can drive through the tunnel. King 5's Glenn Farley is live on the waterfront near the Bertha rescue shaft. So think about where we should have been if the tunnel was on time. We'd be driving through it about a year from now in the fall to winter of 2015. Then after Bertha got into trouble, then that got moved eventually back to a year to the end of 2016. Now we're another eight to nine months beyond that till August of 2017 as this project has gotten a lot more complicated in the last few weeks. The so-called access pit is now 90 feet down, another 30 feet to go. But according to contractor Seattle Tunnel Partners, those last 30 feet are proving the hardest. This all ties back to that business about water and pumping. Construction workers have to pump that water out, that groundwater that was causing the land around here to sink more than an inch. But with higher pressures at the bottom of the pit and bigger gaps than expected between these huge concrete pilings, more grout has to be forced into gaps to keep water out, and that's slowing down the project. At the same time, the Washington State Department of Transportation is thinking the ground may not be sinking as much as first thought. Their estimate was 1.4 inches, which had triggered worry for property owners in the old Pioneer Square neighborhood. These are the monitors that they keep looking at and fixing and touching and whatever, but that, that crack is probably doubled. But now DOT is saying a benchmark, a reference point, was a little off, indicating the amount of sinking might be less than 1.4 inches, but won't say how much that level of sinking really is. While all of this is going on, a giant crane is now in place to pull Bertha's massive cutter head and related machinery to the surface for repairs. Now, how solid is that August 2017 date? Well, basically the contractor, Seattle Tunnel Partners, thinks it may actually happen sooner than that if they get Bertha put back together and the drilling goes better than expected or about as expected. So that is not...
More major delays because of Bertha tonight. The contractor building the new Alaskan Way tunnel says it's going to be months before you can drive through the tunnel. King 5's Glenn Farley is live on the waterfront near the Bertha rescue shaft. So think about where we should have been if the tunnel was on time. We'd be driving through it about a year from now in the fall to winter of 2015. Then after Bertha got into trouble, then that got moved eventually back to a year to the end of 2016. Now we're another eight to nine months beyond that till August of 2017 as this project has gotten a lot more complicated in the last few weeks. The so-called access pit is now 90 feet down, another 30 feet to go. But according to contractor Seattle Tunnel Partners, those last 30 feet are proving the hardest. This all ties back to that business about water and pumping. Construction workers have to pump that water out, that groundwater that was causing the land around here to sink more than an inch. But with higher pressures at the bottom of the pit and bigger gaps than expected between these huge concrete pilings, more grout has to be forced into gaps to keep water out, and that's slowing down the project. At the same time, the Washington State Department of Transportation is thinking the ground may not be sinking as much as first thought. Their estimate was 1.4 inches which had triggered worry for property owners in the old Pioneer Square neighborhood. These are the monitors that they keep looking at and fixing and touching and whatever, but that, that crack is probably doubled. But now DOT is saying a benchmark, a reference point, was a little off, indicating the amount of sinking might be less than 1.4 inches, but won't say how much that level of sinking really is. While all of this is going on, a giant crane is now in place to pull Bertha's massive cutter head and related machinery to the surface for repairs. Now, how solid is that August 2017 date? Well, basically the contractor, Seattle Tunnel Partners, thinks it may actually happen sooner than that if they get Bertha put back together and the drilling goes better than expected or about as expected. So that is not a real solid date. The question, what about the 1.4 inches of sinking? How solid is that? Well, the DOT thinks maybe by the end of this week, early next week, talking to other experts, trying to figure out this benchmark, they may actually have a number at that point. Again, they suspect it is not quite that much. Live in Pioneer Square, Glenn. I think I would just say this, that there is a great engineering mind in this nation, in this place where I don't think uh, we, we're the best in the country when it comes to these kind of things. So I, I have faith. I have faith that whatever we end up whatever we end up designing will be safe, uh, reliable. I don't think Metro or Caltrans or anybody will ever go for anything less than that.